Hey, everybody. I'm looking forward to bringing you this episode called Lift, You Broke My Heart. And this episode is brought to you by our sponsor, the Fair for Uber Car Program. So I used to drive a 2013 Toyota Prius. I got kind of tired of driving the car. It was a little bit loud. So I checked out the Fair for Uber Car Program. I used the program for 10 weeks. It was super simple. Fair even arranged for Uber to pick me up at my home and drive me to my car, which was a nice Hyundai Elantra for $195 per week plus taxes. That includes the car, your rideshare insurance, and best of all, unlimited miles. They also offer a really good bonus, which if you hit a certain number of miles, basically pays for the car. Now, this program is available in California for now, but there are other programs all across the country. So check the FAIR website for the prices in your market. Some drivers are even getting their first week for free. So check it out. Download the FAIR app and get a car today. It's a great program. Be sure to use our code, which is RSG100. That's RSG100. So we get credit for sending you there. All right. All right. Let's start the show. Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime. How about Uber Eats, right? Caviar. All you drivers, all you passengers, all of us who are out there part of the gig economy, welcome. I, uh, I'm great to have you here. I am Jay Crater, and this is my podcast. Welcome to the show. Let us now enter the dojo. All right, today we're going to do an on mic episode on Lyft's severe fall from grace for Uber and Lyft drivers. <clears throat> so, I've got an axe to grind. I, I loved Lyft. Lyft, I was your guy. You were my company. You did everything right. You weren't the big, bad, and mean company called Uber. You were driver friendly, softer, and gentler. They were black, you were pink, but not anymore. I'm going to go over some things that have changed, some decisions that were made, some really tone-deaf things that have happened, Lyft. You broke my heart. So let me me start off with saying why I I, I preferred Lyft for so long. I'm going to list out five reasons. First of all, Lyft did not have these corporate shenanigans, right? Uber was notorious just a few years ago for having a CEO who berated one of his own drivers, right? Travis Kalanick. Uh, The corporate culture was reported to be rife with misogyny and misconduct. And while Uber self-destructed, you know, there was even a hashtag to to stop stop using Uber. Lyft kept a low profile and they benefited from Uber's negative press. They just kept doing their thing. I thought that's the way to do it. Second thing that Lyft did is they kept prime time. So if you've been driving for a few years, you know that Surge and prime time, Uber has Surge, Lyft has Prad prime time, and it was a multiplier. So you could be in an area, you can get a ride, and it might have a, a 300%, right, prime time value. That means you were going to get three times the, the, the rate uh, that the passenger was paying, you know, at your commission rate. And uh, what happened was Uber got rid of theirs, and, and Lyft kept, kept prime time. Right, so Uber had this what's called penny surge, and and Lyft kept their prime time for a long time. And I was like, "Yes, Lyft, you are my company. You are you are supporting the driver." Okay, number three, in San Francisco, Lyft seemed to be busier than than Uber. So this is a big reason why big reason why I preferred Lyft is I felt like if I needed to go for a bonus, um, I could get there easier with Lyft because I could get pings more often. I don't know if that's because there was more demand for Lyft or there were less drivers for Lyft, but two years ago, Lyft was definitely keeping me busier. Number four, these are reasons why I have preferred Lyft over time. 
Number four, while Uber has has provided two destination filters, Lyft has been providing six. And as an aggressive driver who, who goes for those long trips as much as I can, on the weekends, I would use those destination filters. And they were crucial to my strategy to get long trips, to go up and down from San Francisco down to San Jose. And uh, six destination filters was just great because I didn't really ever have to worry about running out because between their six and then Uber has two, I had eight every single day. So that was awesome. And the last thing that Lyft really did that was great is they kept their $500 bonus active for a long time. Just last year, I was able to drive 165 rides and make a $500 bonus from Lyft. Uber used to have, like two and a half years ago, had a sweet $500 bonus for 120 rides, but that got discontinued when they shifted to their Quest bonuses, right? So they used to have one bonus for the whole week. Now they have this Monday through Thursday and Friday through Sunday program set up, and and, and the, the amounts are really small. Uh, so, so when they went that way and Lyft kept their $500 bonus, I thought, man, Lyft, I'm so glad I'm driving for Lyft. All right. That was then. That's ancient history. Let's look at what what has Lyft done for me lately. Well, first of all, you know, in terms of no corporate shenanigans, now they are fighting tooth and nail with Uber to to turn back to to legally fight AB5. So we all know that AB5 has been signed and passed into law, but and we expected Uber to get down and dirty to fight this thing tooth and nail, but Lyft is throwing down the gloves too. So Uber and Lyft, so they're they're like partners in this thing to turn back AB5. AB5 is good for drivers. There's no doubt about it. I've studied it. I've talked to people. Uh, no matter what, it gives us some some leverage. Uh, if it were to pass, it would be approximately like a 30% increase in the amount of benefits and money that we could earn. And um, Lyft, Lyft is basically taking taking not not taking the driver's side at all here. So corporate shenanigans, gone. Okay. Uh, number two, primetime, which I said they kept around. Well, they recently got rid of that as well. Now they have personal power zones. They just copied what, what Uber is doing. And now you drive around and you might end up in a personal power zone and get a few dollars. It's nothing like what it used to be. Third, demand is now on par with Uber. So I haven't conducted any surveys to test this assertion, but it does seem to me now that, uh, uh, Lyft, Lyft has either gotten more drivers or the demand has dropped a bit, uh, but, but it's on par now. It's on par in terms of the, dis- the time between pings between Uber and Lyft. So not a huge advantage there. Number four, this just happened recently, like two weeks ago. Now I only get two destination filters with Lyft. I mean, oh, uh, this, just, this, this was the, the straw that broke the camel's back. Because I could always hold on to, well, at least I got my six destination filters. That's 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 great for me because I use them. And it's just like that comfort, that it's like a blanket, you know? It's like that blanket of destination filters covering me so that I could always use my strategy. Now I only got two. I went down to San Francisco and drove on um, Saturday. I had to use one destination filter to get from the East Bay into the city. Then I got a ride that went over to to um, Marin County. I had to use another destination filter to get back. That was it. I had no destination filters to go from San Francisco up to Sacramento. Um, I had to go go and use Uber, uh, whereas before I would have just stuck with Lyft. But no, that, that changed. And then last year, uh, Lyft dropped their $500 bonus, which was called uh, Power Driver Bonus. Uh, now it's called uh, Ride Share Bonus, and it's down to $300. So each week I can do the same number of rides and I'm going to get $200 less. So that's a lot of a lot of things that have happened. This is why this is why I say Lyft uh, has broken my heart. But let me give you some more reasons why you can be down on Lyft. I also just did an article on cleaning fees. So, you know when someone pukes or poops or r- rubs uh, you know, runs their uh, their luggage across the back seat of your car, makes a mark, makes a mess. I had one guy get in my car and he got red paint all over it. It was a Halloween costume. Well, with uh, with Lyft, you have to report that damage right when it happens 
uh, before you take another passenger or six hours or whatever comes first. And if you don't, they're going to turn you down. Uber, on the other hand, has a three-day window. So you can take care of that within three days. So I thought, what is up with that? Uh, both, both of the times that I had damage to my car, it was on, it was driving for Uber. And man, they, they were cool. They were great. They paid me really quick. And uh, I, I got to say, they were, uh, more, they were more like a well-oiled machine. So then I went back because I have access to the rideshare guy, uh, you know, the surveys that they do. And I looked, I wanted to compare how drivers were feeling about Lyft now versus two years ago, right? Because two years ago, I was very happy. Now I'm not happy. And as it turns out, uh, what we can see here is that 52%, so this is this last year, 52% of respondents said they either strongly agree or somewhat agree that they are satisfied with Lyft. So half of the people driving for Lyft uh, will say that they are uh, either strongly agree or somewhat agree that they're satisfied with Lyft. So then I went back, I went back two years. Do you know what the number was two years ago? So this year it's 52%. Two years ago it was 75%. Lyft's figure has dropped from 75% to 52%. That means, uh, that means one out of three drivers no longer feels the same way. That's a huge number of, uh, of people. That's like a mass exodus. That, that should, should tell Lyft that there's something they're not doing right. All right. Now, as I'm wrapping this up, okay, here's, here's something. I, I watched, recently I watched our own Joe, Joe, the rideshare guy. He did a video. Well, I did a video six months ago talking about this new uh, pay structure that, that Lyft was testing out, right? And in this new pay structure, what Lyft came up with is, you know how right now you get paid once you pick up the passenger, right? Or once you hit arrive, right? That you're, you're making some some cent, some number of cents per minute. Passenger gets in your car and then you start driving and you're making money and then you drop them off. So what Lyft came up with, this was their brainchild, was that, well, we're going to pay you from the time you get the ping to going to pick up the passenger, pick up the passenger, and drop them off. And they're going to get get paid the same rate from the ping all the way till the drop off. And at first, that sounds like, well, that's a great idea, right? But it's not a great idea because they've cut the rate so much that our own Joe did his own analysis and found out that he was he was making ten percent less, right, with this new pace this new pay structure. So he made this video. Uh, he made this video recently because it affected his market, and he said, "You know, this is a big mistake that Lyft has made because they are paying their drivers less, and drivers like Joe are now going to shift over to Uber because they want to make the same kind of money they were making before Lyft made this change." So then, about a week later, Joe made another video. So you should go check these out on YouTube. And in the second video, he said he was contacted by Lyft. And Lyft said, this is the thing that really fr fries my, my shorts, is that Lyft basically blamed the drivers because some drivers, I don't know who, who said this, but they said they wanted more consistency in their pay. Now, there's one thing to want consistency in your pay, but it's another thing to want consistency with your pay when it's 10% less. So I don't think the question was asked, hey, drivers, if we pay you 10% less, do, do, you know, do you want more consistency? Or would you rather make the same amount of money and have a little less consistency, right? I mean, so they're basically saying, well, look, the drivers told us that you want consistency. And since you want consistency, we, we made this whole new program out. And, oh, sorry, it pays you 10% less. And we're supposed to believe that, that that was not the strategy all along. So, hey, Lyft, I have a freaking idea for you. If you want to ask the drivers what they want, do a survey. Okay, so we've all got these things called smartphones, and we all have these apps on them, these Lyft apps. It would be so easy for you to just do a survey and say, 
Hey, drivers, how would you feel if we cut your pay by 10%? Yes or no? I guarantee you, you'd get like a 95% uh, saying, no, we don't like that. Uh, Or you could ask, hey, drivers, if we cut your pay by 10%, but give you more consistency, would you like that? Again, I still think you'd get 95% of the drivers that would say, no, don't want that. So when you say drivers want consistency, I don't know who you're talking about. Um, You certainly didn't ask me. And um, this, this, this constantly saying you have a council that you're talking to when you could ask all the drivers doing a survey on the, on the smartphones, it uh, doesn't make any sense to me. Because the decisions you're making are not in the driver's best interest. So I don't really have any faith in this council of drivers uh, that you're consulting with because the last handful of changes that you've made have resulted in me making significantly less money. I did my own analysis. It's going to come out in an article. And comparing what I was making three years ago to what I'm making now, driving the same amount of hours. And when I adjust for the decrease in, this doesn't even include the the change that Joe was talking about. This is just the decrease in the per mile, the decrease in the bonuses, the decrease in the prime time, now being called personal power zones and a decrease in demand, I'm making 20% less. That's been the net impact of all these changes on me as a driver, uh, 20% less earnings per week. So I'm not happy with Lyft. Um, I may do one of these on Uber, but I feel particularly stung because I was so vocal in my, in my adoration of Lyft. And finally... You know, there was the straw that broke the camel's back. And I got to say, Lyft, you're just not the same company. And what you said you were all about, I don't see that you're about it anymore. So there's my rant. There's my rant. That is Lyft's severe fall from grace for Uber and Lyft drivers. I want to thank Joe for his uh, his YouTube uh, videos, because that, uh, that really put the nail in the coffin when I heard that they were blaming the drivers for saying they wanted consistent earnings for this new policy. I just thought, you know, that's just bullshit. That's bullshit. So you got to call bullshit when you see it. And that's bullshit. Because if you asked any driver if they would be happy with a 10% cut, uh, I guarantee you no driver is going to say that's what they want. Okay. Consistency or no consistency. You cut our pay, we're not going to be happy. No matter how you frame it, no matter how you couch it, that's not good news for drivers. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening. And uh, let me wrap this baby up. If you're considering driving or you want to make more money as a driver in San Francisco, be sure to visit my website at ridesharedojo.com. Click on the Master Course link. If you're thinking about starting an online business, you can check out my other website and get my book called What's Next. That website is called nomadj.com. I also do a daily one minute uh, per day podcast, which a lot of people are starting to tune into and get into. It's called Nomad Daily with Jay Crater. And I share different aspects of life, little lessons, little things I've learned along the way, uh, 60 years of life, 35 countries, all that. So um, check it out. You can... Find it wherever you get your podcast. Nomad Daily with Jay Crater. Next episode, more news, interviews, all things rights here dojo for drivers and all of us in the gig economy. Thanks for checking in. I'll do my best to bring you the best here in the dojo. This is Jay Crater. Thanks for entering the dojo every Monday and Thursday. Drive happy and be safe out there. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.